Hey everybody, it's Matt. Wrestling with Whiskey is back. Another episode of Straight Shooting coming right at you. And this time, I just told him right before we started, they finally got somebody with a cooler setup than me. Somebody who takes the broadcasting and wrestling world to a whole nother level. But I'm going to try to introduce something, throw him for a loop. Somebody who can kind of do almost everything. But I'm going to introduce him to something new. Someone I've become recently acquainted with in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a fantastic welcome to the one, the only, the outlandish Zicky Dice. Zicky! Hello! Hello, Matt, and wrestling with whiskey. I'd be lying if I said this wasn't the first time I was wrestling with some whiskey, but you know what I mean. Uh, well, maybe the first time the cameras are rolling. Or, hey, maybe it's the first time I admitted it publicly. But here we are. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, freaking lutely and we would have it no other way. But today, see, this, I, I am with you as boys on the road. We we, we know what, what a glass or two of whiskey looks like. That ain't, that ain't no stranger to the wrestling world. But here, but I'm, 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 I'm taking it in a different direction. Much like we all have little things in our lives that we, we geek out of, or that we nerd out over, that we just kind of go these crazy things we have on the side outside of wrestling. One of them for me is whiskey. And so I try to, for most of us, it is. It's a shoot it down have a good time let's party but i, I want to bring it like let's take let's take five seconds let's take 10 seconds maybe more and let's see if we can there's more to you know a whiskey than just a shot of jack daniels and you know and a good night that hopefully you can remember the next day <laughs> well, maybe, maybe not but uh yes yeah, so we'll be going through three different samples just like you guys all know we're going to go through three different blind samples today uh there is a little bit of a theme here uh to match the outlandish one as well but we'll i'm not going to reveal that we'll get that after we've had all three samples just because i want to see some reactions before then but um but before that a question yes please well, two things. First, we got to drop a disclaimer because if I'm going to be sipping whiskey with you, Matt, right here and wrestling with whiskey, things good get outlandish. So you've been warned too. Is that a whiskey t-shirt you're wearing? God damn right it is. I'm glad I could figure that out. Okay. All right. That That is a pretty sweet t-shirt, dude. Jealous. Yes. Big thanks to the, the folks over at Bardstown Bourbon Company. Yep. We, we, we shout out cool. that legal definition of bourbon. Has to be at least fifty-one percent corn. Then you fill it in with the other ingredients. I, I was taking notes because I thought that's how you built your body. And I, I've asked you. I was like, Matt, you look great. Is, is that what I got to do? That I, I, I got the recipe written down. Now, or, yeah, all, all carbs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> all carbs. But, but hey, for all you, you know, if you if you're a new ag, if you're if you're looking at it, you know, this stuff, it's all vegan, vegetarian. A lot. You can even get a. Uh, kosher whiskey you can get uh or certified organic where all wow. the green is certified organic certified kosher i mean yeah it's it's all plant-based brother wow i love that i'm gonna say you know there's a lot of alcohols that i do not like and whiskey is one that i do like so i'm pretty excited to dive in today yes we'll we'll, we'll get some more some more in-depth knowledge but before that we got to go just we're here we're also here to talk about you my friend we're here to talk about you you are the star of the show as well. So, I mean, brother, how are you? How is life? You know, life is pretty damn busy, but that's how that's how we wanted things to be, Matt. Uh, aside from streaming on Twitch and, and, and taking over the wrestling world, I just inked a deal with Impact Wrestling. You can catch me over there, you know, so things are getting busier. You know, I juggle uh, uh, married and searching, trying to buy a house right now. So uh, my sanity is gone, but nonetheless... That's what, that's what we wanted. We're living the dream. Amen, baby. And don't don't leave out, you know, we're going to get to it eventually, but don't leave out, the, I mean, turning the rest of the world on its head, but you are also helping run the production over at Championship Wrestling from Atlanta, which is uh, just about to have its debut episode coming up on, uh, just to make, I'm trying to calculate in my head, this will air before that airs. So, yes, September 18th is the first episode. I was like, Thanks, Matt. My inbox that. is already blowing up now. We must have people listening. Hey, can I get booked? Brother, brother. Hey, brother, brother. Me, Atlanta, question mark? No, I fell into this uh, this gig uh, producing championship wrestling from Atlanta, and uh, it's uh, been quite challenging. I learned a lot about myself and uh, uh, a lot about TV production. And uh, when I, when I work these TV events, most of the spots you'll catch me lingering is production side. I'm a huge production mark. I love production. And, Clearly. Uh, yes, you know, and <laughs> so uh, this job is uh, 
it's interesting, but I, I, I'm pretty excited on, on the future of things and, and getting to dabble in uh, this side of the field. Um, I, I look at it as a way to set myself up for the future. You know, when I when I'm old and chubby and finally hit the Chinese buffet as much as I really want to, um, then I can stay behind the camera and just produce things. So uh, something to throw on the resume there, you know? Hey, man, we can't take bumps forever. Yep. You know what I mean? That's, yep. that's the damn truth. And, I mean, again, we'll get into more background later, but you live in the Atlanta, Georgia area, correct? Yes, so, I mean, for that. Yeah, does it hold kind of – is that kind of a cool thing for you to be like, hey, now I'm also being a part of something that's being built – you know, in Atlanta, is that kind of a cool little connection for you? Totally, totally. This whole thing that, like, the way this all co came together is, is mind blowing. Let's let's rewind six years ago when I moved to the Midwest to train with Seth Rollins, the Black and Brave, third graduating wow. class, and uh, I, I broke into the business a little late. You know, 26 at the time, and I came from I sang in a band called Heart to Heart, so I did the whole music thing. We did Warp Tour and and uh, a lot of big tours there, and I got sick and tired of. Uh, I felt like I was doing too much overtime for uh, for the band. And I love the guys to death. If you're listening, you know I love you to death. But there was times where we had these big old tours and I had to find three replacements on the tour, you know, or or I have to send more emails or talk to our booking agent. It's like, what if I took this energy and put it into myself, right? And here we are. Here we are. And I and anyone that's known me, you can ask anyone I went to elementary school with or or high school. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking do it. And I'm, I'm going to put everything into it. And I, I take pride uh, in going to the Black and Brave. And I take pride in being uh, a role model, someone that people can look at, you know, and and uh, and be like, damn, he did it. He did it. And and there's a lot of people, Matt, that I've come across in this business. And it, all due respect, but uh, I, I mean, okay, this conversation was going to change a little bit. But there's so many places that we can work nowadays, right? Yes. Uh, uh, there's, there's, only, there's so many limited spots. And unfortunately, Matt, me and you can travel in the car every weekend. We can do wrestling with whiskey. You, we can play Overwatch together. But at the end of the day, that's not going to get us fed. That's not going to put money on the table. It, it's a, it, there's, it, This isn't a team game by any means. Like, And uh, I know that uh, I intimidate a lot of people when I come around. And Matt, if I was standing in a locker room and I landed Zicky Dice walk in, you damn right I'd be I'd be nervous about losing my spot. And um, I, I try and do everything with 110. percent I, I don't want to give anyone a reason to say no. And um, and I'm I'm living proof that if you don't take no for an answer and you keep on pushing and you keep on pushing, that eventually something's got to give. I mean. Hot damn, you know, folks. I'm, but yeah. I'm so excited. I'm so I'm so inspired, and I'm and and right now it's a dangerous time, Matt. It's a very dangerous time for for hell, my colleagues, and and this forbidden door that everyone speaks of. Because the thing is, I'm hungry. And when I was when I was at NWA when, and I won the television championship right before right before the shutdown, I didn't get a full title run. I didn't get to walk out with the crowd with my title. I need hell. I didn't even get to spread my wings, the wings that are outlandish, Zicky Dice, and now. Now's the time. If you're watching right now, here's what I want to do. I'm going to open up this fanny pack. I'm going to give everyone a little bit of Zicky Dice stock. Boom, boom. There it is. Because now, Matt, is a time where shit really gets fun. Now we get to spread our wings. And now we get to see what people uh, – uh, now we get to prove people wrong and show them what I'm truly capable of. And that's the exciting part. If you haven't followed the journey, now's the time. And I mean, oh God, should we just end the interview now? Should we just end the show now? There's a, oh. there's a lot of weight on my chest, man. I've, I've been wanting to say so much for so long. And now now I get these platforms. Now I'm a little bit more comfortable doing so because for a while I was worried about, oh, am I going to get a job? Am I going to do this? I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't have had my matches at, at certain places. I wouldn't, you know, go to WWE and I get a standing ovation around the ring. And, oh, my God, you're a star. We never give standing ovations. I did two magic tricks and took a bump in the ring, Matt. One bump, two magic tricks, got everyone's attention, okay? Two standing ovations. Oh, you're a star. Hear this. I, I, I go over to I go over to the elite side of things and, unfortunately, ran run into Lance Archer in a, in a, a quick two-second segment. He I, Apparently, I'm not supposed to help myself to the elite bar, so he grabs me from the back of the bar and just throws me out to the ring. Boom, next we're in a match. I have yet to spread my wings. And it's a very scary time because, you know what, there's a lot of things that outlandish Zicky Dice can't do. Very, I, I, that's that's a smaller list of the things that I can. Hell, you want your own custom jingle? Boom, we can do it in-house. You want, you want a hot 6K promo video? Boom, we can do that in-house. Anything, anything. No one can stop me. And it, it, it's exciting. I'm, 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 and, and Matt, I, I, 
I, get, I hope you can hear it in my voice. I am so excited. I am so excited to be in the position where I'm at because, hell, nobody knows. And I'll, I'll let you in on some insights. Scott Demore said, Zicky, I'll be honest. I signed you without, without even seeing you work in the ring. I don't know if you can wrestle. He's like, I just see what you've been doing on the side and, and your hustle and these videos and, and your grind. And, I, and it, it made me realize, I'm like, oh, <laughs> they have no idea. No idea. No idea. No idea. But you just gave everyone I, a hell I mean, of an idea right I mean. now. I mean, I'm looking. I'm looking at the car. That was that was a good. That was the opening to a to a TV show. That was the opening to a to a wrestling broadcast right there. That that was a six minute promo, based off how you doing. I you know, you know that's that's how ready someone someone like you are. You know what I mean? I I appreciate that. I mean, you can and you, like I said, just it felt if you, if you if you don't. If you take nothing away from all the bull crap we're going to be talking about, we will talk about whiskey and stuff at some point. Uh, got to listen to things like that. I love it when my guests come on here and they tell their their stories and stuff like that. Usually, it takes us forty five minutes into the episode before we start getting into that kind of that kind of hard stuff. But man, take that and like let that light a fire under you. I mean, yes, I apply this to anything in life. I'm not even talking about man. I, I took my my band from my mom's garage, and my own family is like, "Oh, this is a phase, and you waste time." And took that band to the big stage, like, and and then and someone said, "Oh, you're gonna break into wrestling this late," and I, I put everything I had, and like, I'll be honest with you, I've lost friends over this. I've missed birthday parties, missed funerals, missed weddings, you name it. But I knew that if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna give it my all, and there's no excuse. I I can't take any, any excuse. And the one thing I hate the most, Matt, is when fucking someone tells me, "Hey, Zicky, you're lucky." Excuse me? I, I, excuse me? It's not luck by any means. You know how much money and time I put into this? You know how many swap meets I had to go wrestle at? I love when you show up to a show and you don't know what you're getting. I had to do it all. I had to do it all. You know, and I still I still get told no. I still get left on red, and it. It, it, it motivates me. It motivates me more and more. And there's no one on the scene doing the shit that I'm doing. And I say that with pride. And I challenge you. If you're watching, I challenge you to apply this to any any concept of your life. Just go and do it. Go. And don't take no for an answer. It's going to suck sometimes, but at the end, boom. And you know what? You just hit on something that, like, I knew, like, I, I'll be honest, I didn't plan a lot for this interview because I knew, I knew talking to you, I'm like, we're just going to go into some cool places. I just, I know it's what happens when we chat where it's just, it's there, but you just hit on something that I've told like, everybody who gets into performing in any, any, anywhere in like show business and everything like that. I'm like, you have to be so confident in what you do. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. Especially in wrestling. We, we know, you know what I mean? Wrestling, acting, comedy, freaking movies, whatever it is. There's a lot of people like literally physically doing these similar-ish things, right? There might be another guy wearing a pink jacket out there. There might be mm -hmm. another guy wearing glasses, dyeing his mm -hmm. hair, getting some tattoos. There might be mm -hmm. another guy saying, "Oh, I'm a fancy, I'm a, I'm a fancy artist. I'm I'm an actor. I'm a thespian kind of thing." But mm -hmm. you know what? Like nobody, you got to be so can nobody can do what I do better than what, than me. They may be trying to do something similar, but nobody can do what I do better than me. There are so many people I meet who are like, oh, well, but they they do this. They do that. And that's kind of like what I do. Who gives a fuck? Yep. <laughs> I'm like, yep. if, they, if you do it, if you are, you know yourself so well, there's nothing they can do that will be better because you are so confident in what you do. I don't care how cool somebody's 450 is. You can't do yep. what the drama king does. Yep. And yep. you, you know what? You can't, nobody can do what Zicky Dice does kind of thing. Yep. Sorry, that fired me up because that's something that I truly believe in. It, it reminds me of a story. And I, I got to say a huge shout out to my boy, Sam. Sam, if you're listening, I worked with Sam at this pretty cool catering gig in the Bay Area before moving to Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta. I'm so used to saying that. Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before moving to Atlanta. And uh, my buddy, Sam, I, I show up like we would cater uh, corn concerts or like all these cool events. It was it was a pretty cool gig. I met the first dude who, who went to space, and, like the first old man. He was like, tell us about it. Coolest night ever. Anyways, but I show up to work, man. And Sam says, hey, how you doing? And I decided to be honest. I said, Sam, know that every time, every day that you see me here, I'm worse than last. 
because I knew deep down that there was something else I was supposed to be doing. I knew that there's no drug on this planet like entertainment for me. That's what I chase. Okay. I chase that feeling. I chase, and people ask, well, how do you compare wrestling and music? It, 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 to me, it's all the same. I, I want the, I want the people. I want to, I want to make, I'm an emotional salesman. That's what I sell. I sell emotion and I'm damn good at it. And so I realized with, with the shutdown, I said, oh, I, I got to go. And then the Twitch partnership uh, came about and I, I said, I don't play video games. I said, well, how creative can you get? And Twitch opened up so many doors for Zicky. And now the, the indie bookies picked up. And then and then now I'm finally getting the, the looks that I wanted to get. And I, I can proudly say that Zicky Dice is my full-time job now. You know, and, I, and, and, this, and Zicky Dice could have been my full-time job two years ago. It could have been my full-time job three years ago, but I was afraid. I was, afraid, I guess, secretly afraid. I know that's what I did when I got off work, off to the gym, off to the shows, off to this. But why was I not going all in on myself before? And people, there's a way, like, this is how I make my money. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the secret out right here, right now. It's a big spider web, okay? Some comes from Twitch, pro wrestling tees, these bookings here, these, but it all adds up. And with the way the world is right now, there's no reason why you can't be making money doing what you love. 110%. I tell everyone, they're like, oh, but your Twitch is cracking. I said, okay. What can you do? How can you make co content out of shit that you already have to do in life? You know? Oh, uh, I like to go fishing. There you go. Now you got a fishing stream, a hot one. You're going to tell us what you use on the line and well, what you're doing. You're going to take us live with you to go fishing. You're going to weigh them and everything. Boom. Now we got fishing stream. You know, yeah. like, what can you What can you do? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm a huge. I, I like to motivate. And at, at the same time, like, I like to reward those who uh, who I can see, like, that, that similar fire. And, you know, there's people, I'll be honest with you, uh, some of my own good friends that I, – I, I've led them to the water 101 times, but they don't want to drink. You know, I, I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know what else to show you because I've done it right in front of your eyes. Yeah. So, and that's me. There's only so much you can do. You know what? Like, before on that on that note, that's a great note. Let's get into sample number one. Let's get into sample. Uh, let me let me compliment your drink. your packaging. This I got this box. I didn't open it up till today. Okay, the box came about a week and a half ago. And I was sitting there. I said, "What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box?" And then I got. Bottle A, bottle B, bottle C, and a wrestling with whiskey business card <laughs> in the box. I'm very excited. Absolutely. Unlabel. All you know is ABC mystery liquids. I've had. I'm glad you got it. I've had some spouses and stuff be like, "What in the Sam hell is this? Who sent us explosives or <laughs> or or piss or yeah, something?" Because yeah. I at first I didn't have like a business card. I didn't have stickers. I didn't. I just had this like old Amazon box that had like un <laughs> unmarked liquid in it. So yes. like somebody's like, "Yeah, my wife almost threw this away. Maybe you should like label this better." I'm like, "Maybe Smart. I should." You saw. But uh, yeah, so go ahead, pour the first one. We're going to walk through a traditional kind of whiskey tasting. Let me grab a shot glass. Oh my gosh, dude. Yes, How indeed. Dare, How dare me? How, excuse me. I'll be three ah! seconds. How dare he? We'll do a little cut ski here. Oh, 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 oh. oh, wow. I got a Bucky shot glass. Oh my God, Bucky. Hell dude, they just opened yeah. one up. 45 minutes from my house. We got to take a trip one night. Hell yeah, dude. Okay, my, first one being A, yes? First one being A. So give it a little pour in there. And again, your shot glass is fine, but we're not shooting today. Okay. Even okay. though the, the show is shooting, we're, we're yep. sipping. Can I smell so, it? That's what we're going to do. So traditionally, you look at it first, but nobody cares because it all looks brown. Anyway, uh, so what we do there, then we give it a smell Best way to smell it, keep your mouth open, put your nose on the edge of the glass. It'll mm. help it, it'll help it from getting punching you in the face with alcohol. It so, smells pretty good. Smells good. Anything in is it sweet? Is it bitter? Is it smoky? Is it peppery? It's clear in the sinuses for one. That's okay. good. Okay. It smells it, it, it does smell a little sweet. Like okay. I almost might be able to smell like. I don't know. I could be wrong, but a hint of cinnamon. Ooh, maybe. You know what? There are there are no wrong answers. I tell everybody that there are no wrong answers. It can taste like bark if you say it, and I'll believe you. Everyone tastes things and uh, you know experiences things differently. Our taste buds, our nasal senses are all different. Are you sipping? Did you sip little, it? Not yet. No, I was doing. I was doing it. But if you're ready, take a little. Again, don't fire it all back. You want to kind of swish it around yeah. in your mouth. 
and let it let it kind of linger. Oh, 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 oh wow! Strong. Woo! Woo! Fire it all up! Woo! Oh God. Woo! Dear God, Matt, that's trouble. That is trouble in a sip ski, my friend. It's got a smooth. It's very smooth, right? Okay. I feel that I can spit hot fire. You know, I I, I got a nice little hot tongue. So, which means me, I don't know. I, you said no wrong answer, but I don't know. The cinnamon, maybe? Is there sure. cinnamon? I don't know. I don't know. But it's got a, it's very, <laughs> very clean tasting. I'm going to tell oh. you this, okay? I, I said earlier, earlier in the show that I spent a lot of time singing in the band. You know what happens in the band when you're given a $4 per diem? Cheap whiskey. So I've always had cheap, cheap everything. This taste. This tastes very, uh, oh, 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 you know, could be, maybe you'll see, you won't find out till later. Um, but also keep in mind too, this is your first sip of the day. Yes, that's true. That is true. So that first, I don't care if it's 80 proof or hundred million proof. It usually, that first one is always like, Oh, so what we're going to do now that we've had it kind of sit on the tongue, give us a little bit of that tingly numbness, take one more small sip. Because it probably won't knock you back as much. See if you can taste a little bit more. <laughs> Any other notes coming out? I mean, is it spicy? The first at all? initial, okay, like the aftertaste, I'd say it might be a little spicy. At first, I got like a real kind of like Swedish taste. And when I say like sweet, sweet ish. Not yeah. like my bum is on the Swedish, the Swedish, yes. not like that. But yes, it was sweet at first. And then I took the sip back in. <laughs> yeah. You know, it starts getting the gears going. It starts making, it reminding me of old times, you know? Hell yeah. So that's, that's the good. other part. That's the other part too. So the, the three big components are the, the nose, how it smells, the what they call the palate or the taste, how it tastes on your tongue initially. And then... Something to keep in mind, this one's a little bit harder to define, but it's called what they call the finish. So the finish, just like in a wrestling match, uh, it's what it's what sits with you. It's what lasts with you. So it's like sometimes it, it's usually defined by length. So short, medium, long. It gives Sometimes you can taste other things too. So sometimes you ship it and it just goes back and there's, it's gone. It's gone in 60, you know, six seconds, not 60 seconds. Uh, it's gone in a couple seconds. Sometimes you take a sip of something and it, like, it sits with you. It's still burning and tingling and leaving dried fruit on the top of your mouth for like 30 oh, it's, seconds. It's, it's with me right now. I can okay. feel it. I can feel it. And now, it, now it's going down the throat. I can it feel it. We're surprise good. Me. That doesn't We're surprise good. me. Woo. Looking at the bottle, that doesn't surprise me. But, all right. So keep, keep a little bit, keep that sense memory alive a little bit, right? Keep it alive a little bit as we go on along down the line a little bit. We'll get back to the other ones. But speaking of getting back, I mean, you you lit us up about some of the stuff you're doing now about it, your your attitude on life, but you you kind of hit on some of those early days and everything. So let's do it. We're gonna do the, so a little bit of the mumbo jumbo usual podcast bull yeah. crap. But give us, I mean, and don't you don't have to prolong it, but give us the elevator pitch. What was the the beginning? How did you get into? I mean, even before wrestling, how did you get into bands? How did you get into performing? When you know. Sure. Where where were you like start? Where were you born? Because you've been a lot All of right. places. Whew. I have been a lot of places. I'm born um, outside Santa Barbara, California. That's pretty much where I grew up. Um, and I grew up in in a wrestling household. Um, my older brother is he's about eleven year, or twelve years older than me. Um, huge professional wrestling fan. My earliest memories on the TV is Coco Beware. Everyone asked me. I don't know the match, but I remember the bird on the shoulder and who. And I was like, what the hell is this? You know, and. Um, and and let me preface this as I'm telling you the story. Like everyone asks, well, whoa, who, who do you base? What's Zicky Dice based off? And it's based off life experience. Like what you see, this is this is a collaboration of things. It's not just professional wrestling. It's it's uh it's the, the triumph and the trauma and and the way I, I project the way I project this my reality to get through in life. If that makes sense, you know, sure. I, I've, I've dealt a rough card growing. Up. I'm not going to lie to you. We can that's a whole another podcast we can dive into, but. Um, be, pre professional wrestling got me into, and I hate this fucking term, but amateur wrestling. It's so stupid, but freestyle, Greco-Roman, yes. Sambo, um, uh, folk style wrestling in, in high school. Uh, professional wrestling got me into that. So um, I, 
me and my brother, my brother and I, sorry, my younger brother, we started wrestling and uh, we quit. We quit off the bat. My dad's like, you have to go tell the coach you quit. So I told him we, I, I quit at five years old. Went back at seven and and uh, started and started wrestling and lost my ass off. But come uh, freshman sophomore year of high school, I was losing one or two matches a year. I was I was pretty nasty and I knew it. Uh, my my dad had passed away in a, a car, um, car accident, and uh, after that, I was like, "Yep, I'm done wrestling. Uh, I hate life." And this it was our thing, and I did just didn't want to do it anymore. I was just over it. And uh, I found uh, punk rock and underground music, if you will, underground hardcore, and I, and a, a, a lot of people that were like me, if you will. And um, I fell in love with that, and I, I would just I wanted to be in a band and start a band, so uh, put a band together in high school. And uh, I gotta ask, who who were some of the go to bands in those days? Who were oh, who were your like go to bands? Oh man, like drive through records days like you know finch census fail back in the day yes. uh, uh you know alkaline trio the starting yes. line again of kids uh poison the well uh dude the list goes on I, i'm oh. a huge emo boy still i am love love emo jams uh, but that's that's what we want to do so started music and then did that and uh and then over a few years, I, I saw who were the super members of all the local bands, and I stole them all on that, and we put them all in one garage, and we started, and that's where Heart to Heart came together, and uh, Heart to Heart was the most successful project I was in. Um, we released a record in February 2020, uh, EP. It didn't get as much love because of the, the way times are, but it was Heart to Heart. Um, we were on tour with Four Years Strong and Comeback Kid, and I was acting like a jer uh, jerk on stage in Nashville, and the tour manager's like, I got to talk to you after. And uh, his name's John James Ryan. I thought we were going to get kicked off the tour. He's like, why don't you go and become a professional wrestler, dude? He's like, you have the crowd in the palm of your hand. Like, every night, you're sitting there acting like a jerk. They're singing along. He's like, you have, like, just the power. You have the control. And I said, all right. <laughs> just like that. So I, I text Seth Rollins, who I had met on on the tours, and Passy, because he's a, uh, he's a music fan. I wouldn't say we, we like the same bands, because, my God, Seth likes some shitty music. I will be honest. I will say that out loud. But yes, he likes some shitty bands. Loves them. I don't know why. I don't know why. He does. He does. Um, uh, and he said, I said, I want you to train me. He goes, ah, 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 ah. Are you serious? I said, I'm going to be better than you are one day. He's like, I'll see you in May. So we wrapped up the tour, packed up my shit, sold everything, and moved to the Midwest. And uh, I haven't looked back since. I do miss music. I manage a few bands on the side now. I work with this group called Pinup Artist Management. So I still manage a few bands. So I still get to dabble in music. And I got a few bombs to drop here on Wrestling With Whiskey. And we'll start with this one. I'm currently working on a Zicky Dice single. Yes, that's right. A Zicky Dice single. And it's not going to be what you expect. A lot of people are going to expect it to be a, a little silly. And stuff. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. This is going to be hip-shaking, love-making. Music. Oh, baby. Yes. Yes. So I, I, I love music, you know, and I uh, went to my first live show and shit two years the other night. Uh, I went and saw uh, my buddy Dragged Under was opening up for Beartooth and um, God, what was the middle band's name? Oh, my God. Uh, Wage, War. Wage War. Wage War. Great show. Great show. It, uh, and uh, it was it was cool to be around live music and music and wrestling go hand in hand. I always say, Matt, it's. Uh, people ask me, like, how was the transition for you? And I got to say, I'm thankful that I, I spent time uh, in the music world because making the transition, it's the same carnival, different game, baby. Step right up and win a prize. But I had, I knew where to get merch. I knew who good designers were. And off the bat, it, uh, perception is everything. That's the biggest secret. Make the world think that you're bigger than you actually are. So that was a step up. I see all these people in the Indies, that, you know, terrible looking designs, terrible looking. This is like, oh, you got it. You always a step up. Always. That, that's that been uh, my vision ever since. And here we are. Here we are. And it's 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 kind of a crazy how how life leads you to these places like they they, they it, it really is. I, I was I was complaining the other day, Matt, and I w had an early flight. Uh, airport's about 45 minutes from my house. I had to be there at 5 a.m. So it was an early morning and I woke up and I was tired. I couldn't I, I, I suck at sleeping. Sometimes I wake up a few times throughout the night and I don't get a solid night's sleep and it's like, oh, man, I got to go. My gear bag's packed. And I went and looked at the mirror, and I, I looked up at myself, and I, I just started smiling. And I said, what are you complaining about? This is the job. This is what we worked hard for. You know, this is this is, this is, is it. You know, so I've been, I've been real motivated lately because of that because 
if I can go back and, and tell myself some advice, I, I never thought we would have been here. And one day there will be a, a deep documentary about the life of Outlander Zicky Dice because there's so much in that synopsis that I left out that I have a very interesting story that I feel like I should share and um, that could help and save a lot of people. And uh, I, I, you know, I struggle with PTSD, anxiety, and depression, and and realizing that I'm here at this point. It's very, it's 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 cool. It's cool, you know. Yeah. Like it's 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 very cool, and I I don't ever want to take this job for granted. You know, it's uh, I know we're not here for a long time, and uh, you know, I just turned 34. I know you're right behind me. Happy early birthday! Yeah, <laughs> yeah my, uh, my my buddies called me in ages, but. Uh, I, I got. I wish I could stop thinking like that, but I, I keep thinking about time. You know, time, time. Like how much time? And uh, to be honest, I don't really have a backup plan. That's why I invested in Safe Mood. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, I know. But you texted me yesterday. You know, hey, what are you doing? I said I'm gonna wake up, pour coffee, buy crypto, play Overwatch. You know, like uh, <laughs> I had to be honest. I, I saw the crypto take a dive. I had to get in, man. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, I'm very happy to be at this point, and uh, I just want to enjoy the journey, enjoy eating, eating uh, different food spots around the world, and uh, and and making memories. I, I'm uh, I'm failing at taking more pictures, so I'm trying to do that with friends. You know, yeah, I realize, cool. God forbid, you know, uh, someone passed away, and I'm like, dude, I hung out with them a hundred times. What do you mean I don't have a single photo? Like, what what do you mean? You know how how did that happen? And and uh, it's all about making the memories. You know, yeah, and. Uh, so that's it. This is a, no, a heartfelt, like a nice emo talk. No, but dude, it's 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 true. And I think what yeah. you're, what you hit on, I mean, is a lot of it's, it's it's perspective, man. Sometimes I think we get sometimes even 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 the most, which blows my mind, the most successful, you know, colleagues of ours in this business, sometimes lack this perspective. And like you don't you don't take take. Five minutes, even if it's not every day, once a week or something, just pull back your worldview. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, right now it, it's really annoying because this person won't return your call and like, or you miss this flight or whatever. But really, like, I just pull back and yeah. look at it from a universe and be like, I'm sitting here like, I miss this flight. This sucks. It's annoying. I have to be at this airport for another two hours or this connection or whatever. It's like, but you know what I'm doing? Somebody paid for that ticket, not me. To mm -hmm. come to this pro wrestling show to put on goddamn spandex and mm -hmm. have a good time in front of a crowd, and then they're mm -hmm. gonna send to send me home. You know, mm -hmm. like there's moments like I'm not saying to get like oh just sit back, but it's like sometimes you got to have those moments of like you, you got Holy you shit. got you have to you have to, and that's something I realized. Hell, my wife and I still haven't been on a true honeymoon since getting married. We got married on a, a Saturday, and though the pandemic packed up and moved to Atlanta that Monday, no joke. Like that's how it went down, and. And it's been on the go ever since because I knew what I wanted and I had to. But if I don't pull back, I will burn the fuck out and, and go go and see my streaming hours like this month compared to last month and the month before. Like the burnout's real. And I and I don't want that to happen, but I got to take a moment to myself. I got to step back because as soon as we get off this call, I got to go and handle some more emails. You know, I got to go be Zicky for a bit. And then we got people coming over tonight. You know, like I got to make sure to have time for myself and make sure that, because – Last thing I need is to burn out and, and lose sight or, or be unappreciative of everything that I do. And then that wouldn't be fun. Yes, 100%. Uh, well, on that note, it's another good note. Let's move on. Let's move to our second sample. Sample uh -oh. B. Give yourself a little pour ski. Let us know. Mm. And we'll do the same funny. kind of thing. Yep. What, do you, you, you have like do you have like a, a harem over there? Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There? I'm pouring it in my uh, my water jug. You, you have know? a young boy. A you have sip. a young boy yeah. over there helping I, I you. I wish. I wish. Mm. So same okay. same kind of thing. Pour it in. Mouth open. Give it a little. Give it a little uh, whiff. What? Ooh, this smells like chocolate. I'm glad you said that. This smells like chocolate. Great first note. Um, I get similar notes from this. So. You you are, you are on top of it. My Sarah, buddy Scooch, my buddy oh, Scooch okay. is interested. He's, he's my tech guy. He's like, oh, oh okay. Man. I was worried. I'm like, okay, oh, you, oh. you are talking to someone. Okay, we got I'm, this. We got this face. The good old, you know, like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we like. Oh wait, is yeah, this yeah, cool? Yeah. Oh, this is cool. Definitely smells like chocolate. Yes. Yes. I think mean, reminds that's me of the holidays. Cool. That's a great note. Mm. And take a little sipsy. Uh oh. Holy shit. Woo! You know what I feel like right now? 
I feel Look like that. Roger Rabbit in the bar when he's like, you, you don't, you don't want it. Yeah. I do want it. You don't. You do. You don't. I do. I do. Wow. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. My first Anything, yeah. Thought. Anything different on the taste than what you? Smell? Oh yeah, way different taste okay. than uh, whiskey uh, A. Very okay. different taste. Very different uh, first reaction to uh, the swallow. I will say, woo, that was extreme. Very spicy, very hot, but the initial taste was like very <laughs> elegant and calm, and like Ooh. it had this like this nice relaxing taste at first. But as soon as I took that swallow, you know, because all right, I'm gonna need a second one. Can I read the yes, second one? Yes, please, by all means. You, you inform yourself further every time you do. Okay, took a little less of a sip that time. Very easy on the tongue. Okay. The taste, I would say, is mellow. Mellow. Uh, the other one was more smooth and clean. I'd say more mellow, elegant on this one. If that makes you sense. Said, so you way. said you got that chocolate on when you smelled it, right? Yes. Did it, did it taste like chocolate at all? At first. At first. I still got that chocolate smell here, too. Yeah. I, I do taste a minor, but it's just like, I don't know. I, like, it's just sound ridiculous, but almost like a... <laughs> A good wood taste in there too maybe i don't know yeah absolutely wood is essential to whiskey you know the, the barrels and all that stuff it's very yes oaky woody notes are very yes. very common look at you goddamn good pro stuff, already this is good this goddamn is good stuff. pro already all right i've you only know. had a, a few whiskeys and uh, sadly most of them were fireball shots free from the boys you know uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't i think I, I think i'm okay i'm never taking another shot of fireball again man thank you it's yeah. not even whiskey, folks. My stepdad, I'd go home and visit. He's like, hey, meal, fireball in the freezer. Like, no, 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 thank you. You know, cool. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> well, save that. Again, lock it in the memory bank. We got one more to go. We'll compare all three of them in a few minutes. Um, I have a me- funny story real quick to bring oh, up. And I, have, I haven't told you this yet. Not even. And, but there was well, one time, that story I told earlier, the second time I went to SmackDown, uh, I was in catering and you were sitting by yourself and I sat with you and I was like, oh man, yeah, you know, because eh, let's be honest, not everyone is uh, very friendly and approaching there. And you, you were very kind and very uh, cool to me and I, I never forgot that. We had a pretty cool conversation, so I want to thank you for that. Oh, I want to share awesome. that story with you. I was in catering. You were super cool. We talked about uh, uh, your singing and, and choir and stuff and uh, and that was that. Hell yeah! I you get you got it. Like my my that's what it's like. Look, everybody's people there, and there are there are there's so yep. many egos there, and there's so many. Like it's funny because there are mo- moments very easily. It's crazy to me that catering in at WWE literally turns into high school lunchroom because <laughs> there's yeah. extra, extra talents over here. Like the writers are over here. Like even to like. Some there's some like inner like talent, but I'm like even like oh top the top guys are kind of sitting here like the tag team guys are all sitting over here like it's so funny and kind of ridiculous Seats taken you know yeah yeah, yeah. Totally, totally a little bit so it's just yeah it's it, which is it was always always silly to me so I'm I'm glad that you got that impression very yes glad. yeah so thank you for that I want to share that story um so I mean we'll talk let's talk about like what is in front. Of Zicky, like right now, the mo- one of the things we talked about a little bit about it earlier, but one of the things for both of us, obviously, you just showed up, I just showed up not too long ago either. Impact Wrestling, yes. uh, we've just gotten to see you just just flashes, flashes yep. of, of yep. dice so far. I haven't um, really spoke much yet, you know. There's still there's still so much, and I guess I guess now would be the time to drop a bomb on what on what the future's looking like. I might there. There may or may not be a Zicky Dice collaboration with Twitch to bring you something live here soon. I think that's all I can say on that at the moment, but working on something big on secrets. You know, I might have gotten the green light. You know, Matt, one thing I've... If anyone can take anything away from Wrestling with Whiskey today, it's shoot and shoot big, baby. And I think I might have finally hit a little target. So I'm working on something a little cool, a little special, a little different. Um, something that's going to be, uh, it will be on Twitch, but something that people can attend in person as well. Um, so working on that and, you know, still uh, 
you know, I'm at the at the bottom of the total pole at Impact, uh, you know, and I don't like that too much. So I got to got to climb that pretty quick. And I think that's that's the foreseeable future. And on top of balancing talent, making sure I'm pleasing everybody at Championship Wrestling from Atlanta, you know, um, got my hands full. Got my hands. Yes, full. yes, you do. And that's a good you know good good problems to have. As yes, say. yes, and very very excited to see how the how it plays out because it's like okay, you know, you you, you dream about getting to this point. It's like oh shit, we're here now. Now let's let's go. So now you got to uh, do it. Now yeah, you got to freaking do it. do it. Now you got to go. Now we got to go. So I mean. I know it's cheesy questions. It's typical questions, but you look around, you look around that impact wrestling locker room. I mean, who, who does someone like Zicky Dice want to do, do work with? Who do you want to oh, do business with? Like I've been saying for a while, the first one that comes, uh, name comes to mind is Jake something. I want to work Jake, wrestle Jake. Um, I want to get in there with literally everybody. And there's one thing, you know, uh, I, I, there was a point in time where I was doing a lot of magic tricks in the ring and, and stuff like that. But good known secret is I can go and I want, it's time to show that I can go. And uh, I, I want to mingle with everybody and I want to yeah, impact. Dare you give me a live microphone because then it's over, then it's done, you know? Um, so I'm excited to see, you know, I'm under, under the learning tree right now. I've got to learn a few things, but you know, who knows? Maybe student versus teacher. And I put Brian Myers on his ass here soon. I'd hate to do it, but you know, I can only sit here and listen to so much. The things that people say, you know, and, and you know, sometimes, sometimes Matt, you gotta, you gotta play the game, right? So I was getting ignored for a little while, but here they were taking open submissions for this learning tree thing. And, you know, I got picked. I haven't been saying much just yet. Foot in the door is a foot in the door. That's and it. Then, foot in the door is foot in the door. So, so when I I feel like it's time to show what I've learned and then some, I think everyone's in for a real surprise. Yeah, damn right. Now, all right. Let's on that note, kind of. You talk about. Let's get let's, let's get a little bit real about pro wrestling here, and I think so. You bring up a really interesting point because I feel a lot of the same thing. I feel like in a lot of ways, even at WWE, flashes, flashes, but I didn't get to, I didn't get to spread my wings sometimes, especially like like I said, in the ring, I want to show that I can go. I know mm -hmm. I got a lot of character stuff that I can bring, but I want to mm -hmm. show that I can go too. But so my, one thing that I, you know, I kind of always, I always wonder with myself, and I think a lot of people, like I have a lot of young guys who ask me like, oh, what should I do? Advice and all this stuff. Um, you, we live in a world where everybody, you know, I feel like every day people are getting more and more at, athletic. People, people can go that the physical part of wrestling. The kids are getting good at it. Let's put it yeah, that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. So, where do we find balance in? Because you, you, you seem to have found a really strike a really good balance. Because like, you have this character. I mean, it is outlandish. It is over the top. It is excessive. It is this. So, how do you find balancing that? without that overshadowing and becoming the caricature guy who only does that. And we don't worry about him wrestling. You, and gotta, you, 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 you also don't want to be ass. the guy. You don't want to be the guy though, too, either. I, Cause I I've seen so many boring guys who yes. can go and can do every spot and move in the book. So where do you find that balance? I got to say, I, I, I just hearing you speak about, about this. I don't think it's anything that you or I have to worry about. And I think no. the balance is, Matt, I think the balance is I put someone on their fucking ass and grab the microphone and rip the rip everyone a new one because I can do both. I try me. I've got I've got a gold medal in freestyle rec wrestling national championship, gold medal in Greco Roman wrestling. Come get some. Come get some. I can go. And I will do, you know, and, and it's a damn shame. It's a damn shame because a lot of these people I see on our television sets every week, all across, all across the wrestling world, Matt. This candle's got more charisma than the mat. This candle has more charisma than most of the talent I see on the television. And you know what? Something, you know what I've learned is that it's these fans, the people that we get to entertain and, and that love what we do, they won't buy bullshit and we can't sell it to them. It's got to be real and it's got to be genuine. So if you have someone out there faking some bullshit, faking like they can do what we do, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You know what? I'll be honest. I went to the trampoline park a few weeks ago. I tried one of those hoopty doopy whoopty doop foopties. I landed on my neck, miss, miss, missed every piece of foam in that thing. And I, and my buddy said, Ziggy, you don't need to be doing that. And I said, you're damn right. You're damn right. So let me climb back down and go back to the nacho stand and, and get some ice for my neck. You know, we don't need to be doing that kind of shit. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried. Uh, 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 
DDP invited me over to his, his place recently to do uh, uh, a workout in the house. And he said, and he talked and showed me about his body. He's like, I can't imagine these guys um, that how they're going to feel at my age. He's like, I worked the normal, the normal uh, work rate back then where it wasn't doing flips or dives off this or that. And he's like, and my body hurts and it hurts bad. He's like, so I can't imagine most of these guys are going to be, uh, you know, in wheelchairs or crippled. And I've dealt with a few injuries in, in wrestling, and they are not fun. They are not fun. And there's things that I used to do that I don't do anymore because I don't want to get hurt again, you know, because mm -hmm. get hurt, you don't make money. And and there's no backup plan. We don't want me being miserable and hurt, you know. So I, I work around that stuff. And I, I think I think the, the good balance is you get those – get those main event matches or, or you get these, these matches where you know that you can go with someone and, and you go and you go and you leave the camera stuff to the camera stuff and, and go. Um, and I'm really excited to, sh to showcase that side of me because that's something I don't think people have uh, realized yet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know what? And you, you hit a, another point, uh, something that I've always, always, always harped on. And, um, and you know what I learned it, you know what I really learned it from? Like I, we learned it a little bit from coaches and, and from just experience stuff, but they, there was an acting coach an act, like a, a Hollywood acting teacher, like well-renowned acting teacher who, who, who kind of hit the nail on the head. He's like, and just what you said, people can smell bullshit. They mm -hmm. don't know it. Like they can't pick out why or whatever like that, but they know when you're, when you're faking. And mm -hmm. so, like, that's again, it calls back to what we're talking about. You have to be so invested in who you are. And I mean, it doesn't matter. Again, I, I love you as an example because you are, you, it's so over the top. Like, it, it, to the point where, like, nobody could pull this off and feel like real. But, like, you in all the color, all the lights, all the extravagance, you're so like, well, this motherfucker believes all this crazy shit he's saying. Yes. Because okay, you yes. say it, you have conviction and you believe the word, even in. And then I say this with acting too. I'm like, even if it's the most, you don't, as a human being, whoever behind the character doesn't believe it, but you have to believe it in that moment on that, you know, when that red light is on and everything like that, to the point where nobody can doubt the words you're saying, the things you're expressing and everything like that, that people, right. people don't always, they like, all right, if I just get really angry and like say this promo, it'll be fine. And people will buy it. Cause I can do a great kit. I'm like, dude, you have to believe everything you say down to like your percent. And like when I started having the most fun and I really turned up the whole outlandish thing, I, I, I thought, I said, how can I get this character to the next level? Right? Like I had this vision. I still didn't know what I was doing. And, um, I, I looked completely different. You know, I had a big old red beard and brown hair with the little man bun up top and all this stuff. And I said, no, no, we got to commit. We got to commit. I'm sitting here thinking, I go, Sasha Baron Cohen, Sasha Baron Cohen. Think about any time Sasha Baron Cohen's out in public with these roles. He is the fucking character. He's the character. So when you see me at the airport and I'm wearing some, what you see is what you get. I am a living cartoon character. I'm a living, walking cartoon character. And I, I say that because that's what I've been told time and time again from all these different pe people. That's what's gotten me these sponsorships and this because I believe what I'm selling here. Because what you see is what you get. Like I said, it's not made from, oh, so-and-so, no, no. This is experience and trauma and, re and my reality. This is how I see life. This is how I get through life. So that's what you're getting. That's what I'm giving to you. Do you want some? It's for sale. So on that note, I'm going to flip it out now. I, I just spent that whole five minutes totally punching that point, too. You hit it great. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate on there for you. And I'm curious. And you're, you're a great person to ask this. So you say you you through years, through experience, through life, you've developed this this persona, you've developed this and everything, you developed Zicky Dice. Um, and you 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 just said it there, like, hey, sometimes you see me at the airport, you what you see is what you get. Do you find so is there a time to quote unquote turn it off? Do you you know what I mean? I don't know how close it is where you can sometimes I think there are you know, you hear the historic cases of you know Ric Flair who couldn't turn off Ric Flair and be Richard ever. Do you ever either worry or have problems or, or ever think about things like that? Absolutely. Uh, let's let's be real. Like you, yeah. you said, you said it earlier. You said, "Hey, we're all just people." You don't think that I get into an argument with my wife before I got to be at the airport? Sometimes you don't think I, I butt heads or have real problems, or you don't think I, I, I lose a family member and I still got to go to a show? Of course, of course, and that stuff. And I worry, you know, like, oh, I don't feel like Zicky today, you know, or like, or these people are paying or expecting to see. They're expecting to see outlandish Zicky Dice, and 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 I worry about people not getting their money's worth because I, I'm dealing with some personal shit, and that that's that's my biggest worry. Or let's play double devil's advocate. 
how about all the mother motherfuckers that I fool that judge me off a character that I play that don't know the real me? How about that? How about that? Because there's a lot of people, a lot of people that we both know that, that do that. And I love that because that means I'm damn good at what I do. And, uh, you know, I, there's times where, like I said, I'm having some rough shit going on. I got to go. I got to go hit the curtain. I got to be outlandish, sticky dice. But I'm an addict. That drug, that music, when I hear it hit and I, I pop through the curtain, that, boom, it's all it's all forgotten. That's why I do what I do. That's why that's why I, I go to entertainment for my release and to escape my reality. And and yeah, I can flip flip it on, but maybe the hardest part is is turning it off. When can I turn it off? And will I ever be able to turn this off? That I don't know. And that we're a long ways from. And and there's people that I've seen that have retired in this business, and I don't think they're able to turn that off. And and I, I don't have a backup plan just yet. Um, I've always been just kind of let's ride the wave, but I don't know. Maybe we'll have to reevaluate in 10, 15 years. Well, maybe maybe we'll have another episode of the show in 10, 15 years. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, right. we'll see what's happening, baby um no that's 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 fantastic it's 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 something it's always something always to think about uh and on that note let's go ahead let's finish this off let's finish this triumphant Ooh. off with sample c okay okay sample c <laughs> beaver tested beaver approved says the bucky shot glass <laughs> you're damn right all right so same approach Okay. Um, Not as strong a smell as A or B, I'll be honest. Okay. It, it is, uh, got the nose hairs tickling. I feel like this one's going to be dangerous. Okay. Uh, there's no, there's, there's no smell, you know? Okay. Ooh, I, I feel point. like there's not much of, you know, honestly. I, I, I don't say I, I smell a, a scent or flavor, really. Okay, a little more mild, a little more bland. Yes, okay. yes, a little bit more mild, a little bland. I can smell uh, maybe spicy. Okay. I don't know. All right, we'll take a little sipski. Swish it around. Holy shit! <laughs> oh, my God! Whoa! Yeah! That so, was trouble. So how about, how about that, that mild... <laughs> Dude, dude, <laughs> I was not expecting that. That was a, that was a kick to the face. So, oh my yeah. god! So punchy, L little 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 alcohol. Yes, punch. I I I don't have a taste for you because that that motherfucker socked me, dude. <laughs> Cold cocked me. <laughs> that does not surprise me. Oh, I did not expect that. Wow, I'm scared to take another sip ski. Just a little one. See if you can pick up some, just a teeny tiny one. Just let it sit on your tongue. Ooh. Ooh. That was kind of sweet and like almost tangy in a way. Okay. And at the tip of my tongue. Whew, and I took the lightest slither, if you will. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. Okay. The, the mild punch you in the face. The taste is good. The aftertaste is. Is it lingering good. there? Oh, it's lingering. Uh, okay. I don't. I don't know. If my tongue is numb, or, or it's just burning to to the extreme from the yeah. from the, the first sip. But wow, wow, fantastic. Okay, so we breached that point though. In order of your favorites, you know, when you like from, from lace first to last. Where, where would you yep. put them? You're not going to believe this. A, B, C. Really? Yes. A, okay. uh, 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 A because I didn't like the smell and the, and the, the taste, the lingering taste. B, I really like the, the chocolate smell. And, and, and the, uh, I'm a huge fan of like linking things to memories and it reminds me of the holidays, yes. which is super cool. So yeah. that. C, don't get me wrong. I didn't put an aura. C. We can we can flip this backwards too. C. It depends on my mood. If we're going out to party, pour me up some C, baby. You know, like yeah. Pour me. Up, I, I'd say I drink A or C if I was out and about. B if I was, you know, maybe having a more relaxed evening. I'd say. Okay. Very good. Good to know. All right. So let's get to the reveal. I'm trying to think. Should I do this? 
Rever- yeah, I will do this reverse order. So I will I will go from CBA. And so uh, the theme, I try to do a theme with everybody. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So with you, I basically was like outlandishly proofed. All of these options, as you could probably tell by now, are high proof whiskeys. They're all <laughs> they're all cask strength, unfiltered, uncut. None of these are cut down to 80 proof or some BS like that. These are all straight man! straight out of the barrel. Straight out of the barrel. Oh and, man. And actually didn't intend it. They all happen to be what uh we call single barrels, and they're individually selected barrels for their flavor profile, some by stores, some by restaurants, so on and so forth. Because individual barrels of whiskey, even ones that age right next to each other, depending on weather, temperature, where they are in the warehouse, even right next to each other on the on the shelf there, they age a little bit different than their partner. So they can have unique flavor profiles. It's when you blend them and all together, you know, like a, a bottle of Jack Daniels is coming from two, 3,000 barrels mixed together. A single barrel of Jack Daniels tastes very, very different. Wow. So on that note, choice C, your, you know, your C, our C is in fact, Jack Daniels. Wow. Single barrel, barrel proof. It's this good stuff. This was selected by a store called Benny's. It's a big chain here. They did a barrel select of this. So this is from one barrel. Jack Daniels wow. uncut. The proof on this is the highest of everything you drank today. Wow. Let me say this. I don't want anyone to think that in the order I put it in that I don't like any of the least. There's no I, I'd say they were all delicious. I will say that. Like I said, very, very good. And that that's 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 impressive stuff. Yes, you no dude, no need to justify. You are all good. So this this is the highest proof. This is um give you give you a, a little reference. So this is 66.8% alcohol. Wow. This is 133.6 proof. To keep wow. to give any give you or anybody else a reference, regular old Jack Daniels black label that you you know shot Jack and Coke, that's 80 proof. This is 20 almost 27 proof points higher. It Woo! is yeah. So this is um, or twenty seven percent more alcohol in this than there is in regular Jack Daniels. Woo! Hope the wife's ready to get outlandish when we end up here, right. baby, baby. I'm feeling it. The fanny pack, uncut, oh, unfiltered, baby. Still so hanging out here, might have to take another. That's right. Hey, you got the rest of those samples in the rest of your day. Um. So choice B, your second favorite, the second one we had is actually a very special one for me. So this this is a very – this one you probably haven't ever heard of. This is from a smaller <laughs> kind of um, what, what we call craft distillery called 1-8 Distilling out of Washington, D.C., and it's a barrel I picked. Ooh. I picked this with my whiskey group right here, patreon.com slash wrestling with whiskey. Um, there you go. Uh, we, p- we picked a barrel of this in partnership with a store here in Illinois. This is un- It's called Untitled. It's from their Untitled series. And this is what makes this really cool. One, this is 120 proof. Wow. So this is actually well, 60.4% alcohol. So still very, very, uh, still very, very, you know, high proof. This has more than just whiskey out of So they took whiskey out of the barrel. This is 10 year old, straight out of the barrel bourbon. But they kept it in the barrel for 10 years? Yes. Wow. But then. They took that whiskey from that barrel and they put it in a Calvados barrel, which is a French brandy. It's a French apple brandy. And they left it there for two years. So 12 12 years total, two of those years sitting in a brandy barrel. So now it it, it sucks in some of the brandy flavor. I love that. I'm a huge fan of how it's made. I love watching this show. And like you just tell me this, it blows my mind that they spent 12 years. 12 years before they put it in that bottle to get it to our mouth. Yes, indeed. And then, and that's, yeah, that's, and to me, that's like a perfect bur- for bourbon. Different whiskeys have different, you know, kind of peak Ooh. points for age. But uh, yeah, so the, it's funny. I loved when you said chocolate and everything, because that's it. Me and my group, that's exactly what we got. It's like this sweet, cocoa-y, kind of spicy. Yeah, yeah. Holiday whiskey is a great way to describe that one. Wow. Good stuff. You're going to have to link me, send me links to all these, each of these bottles. This is oh, great. hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. And then finally, first one out of the gate, first one you tried, your favorite, in fact, is another, again, single barrel, barrel strength, uncut, unfiltered, from Old Forester. You might, may have heard of the brand. 
there it's very famous for, it has a bottom shelf old forester like 80 proof is like a 20 dollar bottle of whiskey but they have a single barrel program this was picked by one of the best liquor stores in the city of chicago warehouse liquors uh they got a this is a brand new program normally they only sell these at like 90 or 100 proof but they just recently started a barrel proof program for for these uh single cast selections as it were and so they're still very hard to find this one is 128.1 proof. Ooh! So the second the Ooh! second strongest thing you had today was this one. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little, uh, you know, buzzing like a cousin a little bit here. A little bit. You do the, yeah, you do three barrel yeah. proofs, even small sips on an empty stomach, they might get you going for a little Ooh! bit of a ride there, baby. So you know, buckle up. Um, but yeah, so this one, this was aged on a high floor too, which the higher the floor, the more heat there is, the more that sucker's going in and out of that wood, which means it's just getting more and more influenced. Interesting. Lower floors, it's usually a little bit more mild. Higher floors, it's hot as fuck. There's, it's, the summers are crazy for the wood. And Dude, then the cold winters suck it right back out. That is so wild. And I just got the most brilliant idea. While you're while you're explaining this, you need to release your own whiskey that you make and film the process. No, Build the process. Don't. Yes, please. I'll be here for 12 years, dude. That's our backup plan. In 12 years, you're gonna release right. the best whiskey from the from the barrel. All right. Do you have do you have the uh couple million dollars it takes to set up a distillery? Because if you when do when my safe moon pops off, I will have the couple million, man. Yes, when it pops right. off, you yes. have my word. I will, I will open a distillery, whiskey distillery. Well, then yeah. we'll do it. Then we'll motherfucking do it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Dude, this is good stuff. Like, okay, this is not going to compare at all, but our buddy Brooke works at this winery, and every once in a while they needed extra hands. We'd help bottle stuff up, and they yeah. would, like, tell us how long we were sitting. It's such an interesting process to how it's all made. Once again, I don't think, thanks to you and, and, and you appreciating this and sharing the knowledge, I think that's something that people just look over, and they don't they don't even realize. Like, oh, oh, all right, I'll pour this in. What do you got? You know, like. And especially uh, with whiskey, I think people have come to that way with wine. There's oh, there's yeah. the connoisseurs, there's the sommeliers, and all that stuff. So it, it's it's gotten that kind of education and that that sophistication. I think whiskey, especially like American whiskey, you know, bourbons and and rye and stuff like that, still kind of fall into that. Well, it's it's shot in a beer time. It's, it's it just gets yeah. the job done. You just get loose and you or you party, you hang out. And yeah. I th there's a growing culture of like. And it's, it's been on a really big rise in the last, like, five, six years of just, like, hey, appreciating people wanting to know what grains are used, what distillery it's from, what, you know, what kind of water they use, what process sure, they use. Sure, sure. So there's a whole culture developing behind that, That's too. So, so cool. it's growing That's every day. So cool. Yeah. Super cool. Wow. That, this is some good stuff. And I learned. I learned. A lot about some whiskey today. I think I got some new faves, you know. There you go. See, and, I, you know? and that, and now that we're sharing a locker room, I can always, I can always sneak you ah, a little yeah, bit more. You know. Ah, you know, open up the fanny pack <laughs> after match and say, yeah. Ooh, but not, there? but not until after your DDP yoga. That's right. I got, I got another brilliant idea. Oh boy, who, who are we gonna rib for one of these episodes where it's just A, B, and C are all malort? <sighs> that we, you go, you got to get someone with that. And that here's, here's my thing. I will never, ever drink Malort again, ever. Oh, boo. I should have. No, boo you. Boo you. That is the most. I should have known my buddy's like, hey, Zicky, let me get you something to drink. Right when I moved to Illinois for a little bit. So what's this? The, dude, thinking about it right now makes me want to gag. I'm not even kidding. That is the nastiest alcohol in there. The no, old... do not. Do not cheers. No, do not. Do not celebrate. It's the old Chicago handshake, baby. I'm a I don't want a Malort Chicago no handshake. Time. I want the Chicago head nod. Like, what's up? What's up? I don't want the handshake. You get that after you get the handshake. Oh, you have to God. earn that shit. Please, I will I will round you up a guest. Let's do A, B, and C as Malort. We'll set them up for the show. Tell them it's some whiskey. Bullshit the whole thing through them, and let's just get them for the content. Who are we going to get? Oh, yes. somebody, yeah, say, somebody who doesn't know whiskey because they'll be there. Yes, yes, the yes, 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 yes. Done. That's where we're going to get. Done, done, and done. We'll put a few dice so that they look this color, and they're all three Malort. Done, done, and done. Easy. I love it. Well, I Zicky, it. thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for uh, hanging out with us, learning a little bit, F lighting the fire under us. You know, I know yeah. I got, I, I'm over here feeling it. Hopefully, some people in the audience can just take some of those, some of those hot takes, some of those points, some of those stories, and just be like, "Hot damn!" Let me go out and kind of seize what I need to seize. Um, so please, you know, 
usual podcast mumbo jumbo. You you're obviously a million different places. Tell people where some of those places are finding you, et cetera, et cetera. I made it nice and easy for everyone. And now's the time that you want to follow this journey at Zicky Dice on every piece of social media out there. We've got uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and you can catch me live on Twitch a few times a week. Twitch.tv slash Zicky Dice. And uh, Matt, thank you for having me. Wrestling with Whiskey. Thanks for the buzz. And uh, look forward to doing this again. Not going to lie. Absolutely. Well, until that time, ladies and gentlemen, you know the deal. Always be expanding your mind, expanding your palate. Open yourself to try new things every single day if you can. And always, always, always be wrestling with whiskey. Mm. Until the next time, ladies and gentlemen, cheers. Thank you.